What is going on everyone, Matthew910657 here. And today we are back with another, while technically not a figure, it is a kind of product of kind that I can box and review. So as it's not new, perhaps, it's not the newest thing we've done, but with that being said, this is the uh, ooh, Premium Bandai DX Half Typhoon from Shin Kamen Rider. So I think I got it all there. So with that being said, nothing more to it. They go right on into it. And alas, we do have our Pretty big box here because the belt itself is pretty big. So we're gonna go ahead and be careful with this knife here. We don't want any accidents to happen of any kind. We're gonna take it nice and slow, all right? Cut away from ourselves. That is the key to using a knife. Just make sure it is in the safest way possible. So there we go. Looks like we got it going, excellent. So this one can, comes out from Hobby Genki. And I don't order from them too often because uh, I just have another variety of websites that I do use. But box itself is there. Um, this was the cheapest version of the product I found, so I had to get it, right? And that's really about it for the box. But here it is. You can kind of see through the packaging uh, the Half Typhoon. We're going to be careful here. We don't want to damage the box too badly. I would like to have this one in semi-decent de condition. Just gonna be careful and just cut right in. And just kinda open it up. So yep, Hobby Genki. We've ordered from there before, but like I said, I don't order from there too often. I've already kind of have some of my local, local uh, places that I've been shopping for for a lot of time. And so, uh, yeah, not sponsored in any way, although that would be amazing if it would. But here it is, this is it, the Premium Bandai, right? So um, you can only have gotten this one at a Premium Bandai in Japan, which is sad because it was just kind of region locked, which is never the fun is thing to do. So here it is, uh, shocker, there we go. And you can see the um, butterfly aug there. And then there is a photo of Ichido there. So the Half Typhoon looks awesome. I really love it. I uh, love the belt, love the design of Kamen Rider Zero. Definitely a very, very awesome design. So let's just keep going on with it. And yeah. But uh, yep, Premium Bandai. So it was a uh, lot to there, but you could order from other specialty shops like Kabi Genki or even Toku Collectibles. I think even Big Bad Toy Store had it, but that one was pretty marked up in my perspective, right? So here it is. Well, not totally. So we do have our set of instructions, which will be handy. Although this is not the first belt we have done. So our instructions are here. We're gonna go ahead and keep opening this one up. There's a little bit of tape and then, ooh. To be fair, this is the first new one I've got. The, one, the ones I had gotten beforehand were technically pre-owned, so. You're seeing an actual first-hand live unboxing, a little bit of these accessories. And then, yep, these accessories as well. And then last but not least, the little plate. And then that's it for the carton. And yeah, so we're gonna go ahead and have everything assembled here. I'll kind of do it as I always do, or I'll kind of like work backwards to show you guys how it might work. So with that being said, when we come back, we will have the Half Typhoon assembled and ready to go. So here we go. Assembly of the belt starts with this here, and pretty much you want to press down on the little button, slide it out, just like that. It requires three AAA batteries. You go ahead and set them in, close the plate back up, bring out this rubber plate here, insert where this, the plates go there together, just like that. And with that, our first step is complete. Coming off of the first part, you want to assemble the left side of the belt first. So you want to go ahead and put the flat side in these three pegs there. So you'll slide it in to where the elevated portion is near the center of the belt. Once you do complete that, you add this little adjuster into the belt on this side as well. Next step is the right side piece here. So before you insert it into the whole belt piece, first up, you wanna attach the two white dividing pieces here. And lastly, the belt accessory here. And instead of going straight in, this time what you want to do is you want to insert it here, 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 meet it up in the middle with the left side piece, 
and then come around and finish off on this other left side piece. Once both pieces meet, you can connect them through the middle with a little bit of pressure. If you would like to adjust the length, you can also bring both in to where both of these are intersected. But this is what I have chosen. Lastly, you want to close the belt up to whatever you desire and give you the effect of the clothes. However, we are not done yet. Lastly, once you do have everything assembled, you do have your lock button piece, which you can just kind of clip in into the two connected belt portion pieces. It's easiest to push one up and the other down. You will definitely hear it once you have that click and you give it a little wiggle and it's good to go. And for this belt, it does come with these two additional little accessories. So with that, all you need to do is put one on the top here, a simple click will do, and one on the bottom over here. And with that, you have your completed half typhoon. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed my presentation video where I was kind of just showcasing off everything uh, there and how to assemble the belts in the easiest but quickest way possible. Any questions, just leave a comment below. But with that being said, we do have the belt assembled here in full, nicely wrapped around. So with that being said, let's go ahead and turn this on. And uh, as the other ones are, so you can kind of see the uh, thing there, the O with the little indent is on and the X is off. So here we go, we're gonna go ahead and turn it on, see what we got going on here. So just a sound effect there, kind of like the turn on sound effect. Uh, obviously, once we depress the bottom button here, then we will get it going. So here we go. Very nice. Very nice. As you can hear, uh, we've got the full hinging there. We've kind of got all the crackling and the bones breaking and the skin tearing. You've kind of got all that just as you see in the movie of the transformation, the line straight down the middle of the head and then everything just kind of starts coming out into the actual uh, Common Rider Zero. So very, very nice. A very nice long hinging. There is no LEDs, unfortunately. Uh, really would have been cool to see some of the purple LEDs like we do see in the movie once it does turn on. But uh, nonetheless, I guess just not this time around. Uh, I'm sure they'll release another version like five years down the line and then it'll have the LEDs. But with that being said, let's go ahead and continue on. So that was about, what, maybe like 15 seconds long of the hinging transformation sound effect. And it was um, just that. So let's keep going. Okay, so it was a very kind of like, like, I don't know what sounds like silk or like a very like swift type of motion. Maybe that's just kind of like the movement of Kamen Rider Zero, or maybe that's just the putting on the scarf. Um, I can't remember the exact sound effects, but still very cool nonetheless. So here's SFX number three. So those are definitely impact sound effects, uh, punches, or even the... Um, the kind of like force palm that uh, Kamen Rider Zero would do throughout the film. And so let's keep going. More impact sound effects. You can kind of hear the just like the brute in all of it. So here we go. Ooh, that one's nice. I want to say that's the kick when he does kind of like that twirl kick. The kick and then spins and kicks again. I want to say that's that sound effect there. A very nice sounding uh, sound effect in my honest opinion. But alas, let's keep going. So a very nice kind of like that metallic-y just impact sound, but just one of compared to the two in the last one. Next one. I think just some more battle sound effects, maybe a little bit of a charge or maybe when he is actually doing that force palm and then shooting it forward. Okay, that one I think is a mix. I I don't know if it's the helmet breaking uh, with how they defeat him or if it's like the kind of like meshy, like kind of like tight sound effect. I'm not sure if that's kind of like them moving around or within the suits because I mean it's like rubber in a sense, I think. And then another set of like impact or like flying through uh, with that. But let's keep going. 
Okay, I think we've heard that one. Okay, so it looks like we've cycled through a good majority of them. Yes, it looks like we've cycled through a good majority of the sound effects and uh, very, very nice nonetheless. The fans do not spin on the uh, sound effects, only at least we've seen through the henching. Well, let's go ahead and hold down the uh, button here and see what we get. So I'm not sure if that's the release sound effect when the helmet breaks. I'm not too sure. I'm really trying to uh, think here. It's been a while since I've seen the movie, but nonetheless, you kind of got a, a longer sound effect here. So I'm sure if we can just cycle through it. Yes, we'll get the, uh, the hint. Maybe it's the reset button essentially. Oh man, I really do like this one. It's definitely a very, very nice belt in terms of design and the sound effects that does come with it. Unfortunately, no LEDs. I'd say that's probably my biggest gripe about it, especially coming from Premium Bandai, but I digress, right? Um, as you can see, we've got the double fans and then the zero right down the middle, which is very, very cool. If we did have LEDs, it probably would be purple right behind the fans, just as we've seen through the other rider belts in which I'm gonna jump into, I'll do the comparisons here. So starting off with our first one, we do have the Takeshi Hongo rider belt here. And let's see if this one's on, it was on. So in comparison, this one does have LEDs compared to this one where it does not, so. Just like the simple demo um, mode where you can see it, but in theory, right, the belts are more or less kind of the same besides the design. Obviously we have the one fan compared to the two fan there. Definitely like the two fan, really big fan of that. Keep saying that word, but uh, in terms of colors, the all white versus the black with white and then the blue uh, along kind of like the screws. So very, very cool. And then we'll go to uh, Ichimonji's belt here, which was also on. And so once again, in that demo mode, it does have that LED spin, which is very cool. But in terms of belt design, you can see the red uh, contrast between the black uh, actual like belt straps. So as you can see, kind of more or less the same in terms of the little like pegs on the right and left side of the belt there, but the color is different and obviously the amount of fans that are in there. So. Uh, I mean, not much to compare it with, but the last comparison I'll do do is the uh, Kamen Rider Zero figure I have of, uh, this is the figure arts, but I'll say monster arts. So as you can see there, we're gonna kind of go ahead and bend it down just so we can get a closer look. You can see there, there's the belt. It's got the uh, two fans, the zero there, and then you can see the black, white striping, and then maybe just a little bit of that like bluish screws there. It's a little hard to see with the, my camera. It's not the best, but Regardless of that, in terms of comparison, the belt here has uh, more of a purple and more of a metallic purple compared to this figure where it's kind of just like a straight blue. So very interesting uh, there, but I think both of them are still very cool nonetheless. And so with that, I think that's going to go ahead and wrap it up. We've kind of gotten everything around here. We've showed off pretty much every angle. I've showed off how to assemble it. And yes, definitely a very, very nice belt. I know some people don't like the villain of the film, or at least the fight, but the design of Kamen Rider Zero is especially super cool to me, hence picking up the belt nonetheless. My only gripe with it is that there is no LEDs on the henching sound effect, but um, it is what it is, right? So with that being said, guys, I'm going to go ahead and put it in the dark, and then I'm going to go ahead and just let you guys see it. So I'm going to turn it on once again. Oh, it's on already. And with that, I'll see you guys in the next video. See ya.